Hello friends, I'm so happy to welcome you back to episode two of Watercolour Wisdom, the series in which we delve into questions and musings through the gateway of watercolour painting. In the last video, we looked at relinquishing control and embracing the unknown, and began to talk about trusting the process. I'll have that video linked down below if you haven't seen it yet. In today's video, I want to talk about flourishing in your own time and the constant pressure for growth. And as I'm doing so, I'm going to be painting tulips. This is a quintessential spring flower to me, and as it happens, is my favorite flower too. You may be able to see that the tulips I have in front of me are looking rather droopy and a little less vibrant. So I'm going to be working from some reference photos I took of these flowers a few days ago to help capture the structure of the bloom and their vivid colours. As we enter spring, it seems the perfect opportunity to reflect on our own personal state of growth. Springtime is when all the hard underground work of winter starts to pay off and life emerges once more with the flowers in bloom and blossoms on the trees, as well as all of the birds and animals greeting us once more. The flowers in bloom seem to be a triumph over the harshness of the winter, and yet it is all they can do to bloom. To a flower, they live to grow and flourish. It's part of their survival. And I think we can learn a lot from them. One thing to keep in mind is that for a flower to bloom and thrive, it must exist in certain conditions. The weather and water, sunlight and soil, all play a large role in whether it will flower. This is the same for us too. We all have some degree of influence over where we find ourselves and what we do with what we have. But it's also important to recognise that external factors can impede or impact how we develop and grow. And that this has absolutely nothing to do with your own worth as a person. I like to imagine growth as a symptom of work rather than what we should be striving for. Growth comes naturally when we work hard within the right environment with support and nourishment. But like with flowers, each seed needs different things to thrive and every bloom takes different times to come into being. Would you think less of a rose bush, needing maintenance and special attention throughout the year compared to a sweet pea, with its quickness to grow, immediacy to flower, and potent scent? Or would you recognise that each has their own beauty and place in the garden? One of my favourite things about watercolour paint is its versatility. You can exact more or less control over your work depending on the volume of water and the brush you use. Today I wanted a more fluid and playful use of the paint, so I'm using lots of water and lots of pigment and letting the colours swirl and bleed together. I especially enjoy this technique when painting florals, as the end result looks a lot more organic and reminiscent of the gradients you find on petals. It's also just tremendously fun to watch the colours greet each other and make something completely new. Working with watercolour is a collaboration with the paint. As much as you can intend a certain outcome, it all comes down to what happens in the moment. 
and I like to think that we guide the story the paint wants to tell, not command it. And this is true of how we grow as individuals too. We can put as much energy and determination into achieving a specific outcome, but sometimes where we end up is not what we initially expected. Sometimes it's similar, but not exactly what we intended. Sometimes we end up reaching far greater heights than we anticipated. And sometimes we feel disappointed by where we are. All of these are okay. All of them are growth. And all of them offer us adventure and a chance to flourish in new ways. At this point in the painting, I knew that it wasn't looking quite right. Despite being so vibrant, it was lacking the dimension I wanted. A tip I've learned before diving in with more shadows or highlights is to take a black and white photograph of what you're working on. When you do this, you can accurately see the difference of values on the page and you can see the lack of definition for what it is. You will often intuitively know where to place more highlight or shadow, but if you're struggling to see where it needs work, this can really help. And I find this especially helpful if I really want to make sure I don't overwork a piece, as it can immediately help me establish my next steps. Sometimes taking a step back is what we need to do in order to see where we go next. But I so encourage you to also take this opportunity to see just how far you've come. Be proud of yourself for the growth you've made, big or small. And I hope that this spring is a season of relishing in what you have as you come into bloom once more. Thank you so much for being here. Take care and I will see you soon in another video. Goodbye.